Hey folks, so I just wanted to make a quick update video here because um, today Pedro Castillo has finally assumed the presidency of Peru officially after months of drama and um, at times it looked like there might have been some impediment to it happening. But yeah, he has um, assumed the presidency as of today, as of a few hours ago. He gave an almost two hour long speech, which I listened to um, in part. Overall, it was basically what you would have expected based on the things that he'd said before, though there were some new things in there too. For example, he sort of raised the possibility of like redirecting the, arm, the, the purpose of the armed forces a little bit, making them, for example, work on infrastructure projects and other sort of actually socially useful stuff like that instead of just sitting around in barracks all day. And I thought, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good idea, I think. Another one was that he pledged for Peru to become carbon neutral by 2050, which I think is a pretty big promise for a developing country to make, but still obviously a good thing to aim for. That's a very similar goal to what many first world countries have, have um, articulated. So quite ambitious and it's good to see. He also talked, as you would expect, about like trying to keep Peruvian profits from natural resources and stuff like that within the country. Um, he discussed the issues with um, too much capital leaving the country through foreign ownership and stuff like that, and um, very much emphasized the importance of getting the Constitutional Convention going as soon as possible, and pledged to um, do all of this within the, the confines of constitutional law. Another cool thing was that he talked about possibly mandating um, that indigenous languages in state institutions need to be provided more in areas where they are the majority. So for example, in a place like um, Ayacucho, where most people speak indigenous languages, the, the workers in the state institutions would now need to be bilingual, which is certainly a very good thing. And he also spoke specifically in the language of um, plurinationalism, which is what we saw in Bolivia, where the state was kind of reformed to acknowledge, um, you know, the different people who all live there, to give more importance to indigenous people who have historically been excluded. And that, that whole language thing would be a part of that. Another thing that I also found interesting is that he said that he only wants to be a one-term president. He only wants to, to rule until 2026, after which he said he's going to go step down and go back to teaching. Now, whether that's true or not, you know, we'll wait and see. But it would be an interesting sort of precedent. It might be a bad thing if he, if he, if he ends up having a good presidency and becoming more and more popular. Because, you know, as we saw in Ecuador a couple of years ago, um, that can sort of backfire if you choose someone else to um, run in your stead and they end up, you know, basically betraying everyone who voted for them, which is what happened with Lena Moreno. That is just a sort of fringe, fringe concern. It might not be likely. It's very possible that he's also going to um, end up endorsing someone else who sort of continues sim a similar sort of project. But yeah, there wasn't really much new in there. Oh, there was one bad thing, though, that really did catch my eye. And that was when he said, I think, if I understood it correctly, he said that he wants to reinstate compulsory military service for people, I think it was between like 18 and 22, who are not employed and who are not in education. So that's a pretty bad thing that I'm certainly against. Though, in light of his comments of the military now, or at least that he wants to redirect the military towards being used for more actually civilian, civilianly useful purposes, that could also basically be a way to give people um, jobs, basically. You know, because obviously they're going to be paid a soldier's salary if they do end up um, being drafted into, into the military. And presumably they're going to be utilized to build roads and schools and stuff like that. So maybe it's not that bad. Though still, any sort of um, involuntary arrangement like that is definitely not great. No, it's not that out of line with the rest of the world. You know, plenty of countries have compulsory military service. It's just, you know, when it's gone, it should be gone. It should not be reinstated. But aside from that, I didn't really hear much that wasn't what we would have already expected from him. Oh, another thing um, is that he pledged to make um, the, the Constitutional Assembly, if it comes to pass, to ensure that it has gender parity, representation for Indigenous people, etc., kind of similar to the way they did it in Chile. And obviously the most important thing is that he did all of this while 
wearing the the famous um sort of shirt that Evo Morales wore for the entire his entire presidency and that he still wears a lot clear sending a clear message of that which is clearly based obviously so yeah the the saga is over for now let's see what happens from here congress is still um quite opposed to to castillo so not really sure of how things are going to go if he's even going to be able to do much but yeah we'll see um yeah that's the update see you guys on the flip side